Light passing through a single slit is going to give us a diffraction pattern that's quite a bit different than our double and multiple slit situations. Say we have a single slit, and coming in from the left, we have in-phase monochromatic light. You might expect a nice round curve projected on the screen where the light is just kind of spread out around the edges. That isn't quite what we get. Even when light passes through a single slit, it will interfere. So in the case of a double slit, there are essentially two sources of light that can interfere with each other. The same thing happens in a single slit situation, even though there is only one place where the light is coming from. So light can actually interfere with itself. What we get is a large central maximum bright fringe with much, much smaller fringes on either side. The bright fringes are a result of two waves constructively interfering, and the dark fringes are a result of the waves destructively interfering. So how does this happen? If we zoom in on our slit, we can see that the rays initially are coming in parallel to each other as they move towards the single slit opening. This is because the light is monochromatic and in phase. But according to Huygens' principle, each wave front is emitting little wavelets. If these rays of light interfere constructively, then there will be a bright fringe form on the screen. It turns out that the brightest fringe occurs directly at the center. So when the rays travel horizontally with respect to the incoming rays, there will be quite a bit of constructive interference and the bright fringe will form. However, because of the wavelets moving out in front, some of the rays will bend and travel at some angle to the horizontal. So let's say we have our rays traveling at some angle theta, and the bottom ray is traveling exactly one wavelength further than the ray at the top. If this is true, then the ray that is in the center must be traveling exactly one half of the wavelength further than the ray at the top. This in turn means that the ray in the center and the ray at the top are out of phase by exactly one wavelength. So when they meet at the screen, they will interfere destructively, forming a dark fringe. What about the ray just below the top ray and the ray just below the middle ray? These two rays are also one half of a wavelength out of phase and will destructively interfere with each other. This just keeps on going and we end up with a lot of dark fringes formed on our screen. The dark fringes can be described by the same equation we've used for all of our fringes up to this point. M times the wavelength is equal to capital D times the sine of theta, where capital D is the width of our single slit, theta is the angle of the diffraction, and m is the order of the fringe.